Hi, I'm Dean, Chief Operating Officer at Motifinity Group, and I've recently had the pleasure of talking to Sarah Harris in a raw and honest conversation about her work in social care, SAFA, and her new aspiration of volunteering for the Alzheimer's Society, which is now come true. Sarah's father and husband both served in the armed forces and it was a delight to share her views on the whole range of topics in this podcast. Motifinity are so proud to support the UK's armed forces, serving and ex-serving, and to help raise awareness for those military charities working so hard on behalf of our local communities. I found Sarah so easy to talk to and I learned so much from the time I spent with her. Um, we both just gelled in the podcast and we had a really um, interesting conversation and at points I, I, I did feel emotional. But we um, seemed to really get on well, the emotional intelligence was there and um, the energy was great and I hope that you enjoyed the podcast too. Hi Sarah, how are you? Uh, hello Dean, it's really nice to be here and I'm good, thank yeah, you. Yeah, good, you. yeah, it's been great working with you over the last three years and just wanted to know that we really appreciate that relationship. Oh, thank you, and I've really loved coming over to Most Affinity. You're so engaged and so engaging. Yeah, it's so been I fun, really hasn't it? it? That coffee morning was really yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed it. Um, I just wanted to know, know like, um, what your aspirations was when you, when you was younger. When I was younger, so when I was younger, I originally wanted to be an occupational therapist. I've OT, always, yeah. yeah. I've always been a people person, but um, unfortunately I had a really bad, what they call in those days, upper sixth year health-wise, chicken pox and glandular fever. Very typical teenage right. illnesses, so I didn't get the A-levels I needed, so I then changed tack and did social work oh, as my, um, you did so my oh career. gosh that's not easy that's is like, it social work yeah, so you're no, a trained social worker i i was lapsed many years ago when i discovered um bricks and mortar who are a little bit easier to manage than right. than people sometimes yeah <laughs> so i went into care and supported care housing and supported housing gosh so, so yeah. you, i mean you're real really are part of our eligible audience right from the beginning um i adopted my son um, with my partner, so we went through the whole adoption process. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, he had a social worker, and we had a social worker, mm -hmm. and it was really intense, but a uh, best thing ever. Yeah. And we we actually got him from birth through oh, Nottingham wow. County Council, yeah. and they um they had a celebration um, hearing, and the judge was everyone was just crying the judge is like this Aww. is the best part of my job and stuff like that but the, but the, our, our social worker used to tell us some quite horrific stories is there any i know you probably don't want to go there is there any stories you've got to share about social work well my mains i, w I was in social work for about eight years wow. um and one of the th main roles that i had was i worked in mental health mainly oh, cool. and we were involved with the closing of the long stay mental health hospitals yeah um and i lived in kent at the time so we were down in maidstone and um we got to know the people that we were supporting to move out because i was part of a team who were metaphorically given money yeah. by health to purchase houses yes. to support people to move out i remember um, the whole movement community care yeah. mid 80s it was a long time ago um and I remember one particular lady from a hospital just outside Canterbury called St Augustine's yeah. who'd been in hospital for about 70 years. So bless her, she, she'll oh. no longer be alive because this was the um, mid 80s. Wow. And um, when, you, when I had the opportunity to look at her medical records, she was in hospital because she demonstrated childish behaviour. Um, and she was very able. She yeah. used to do a lot of work on the wards, support the other patients, God. but she was just in hospital for something so, that would not have been a major issue. She might have been a naughty girl, yeah, but not but still, institutionalised. I know it, it was um, um, so different than the institutionalisation. And um, I remember, I've got a lot of friends actually that work actually in normal housing mm -hmm. with like two or three people that they care for. Okay. Because um, they actually closed down all the institutions and then moved yeah. them into housing. So yeah, that's really that's really cool. So so your so your young aspirations. So you you actually did manage to achieve. I mean, obviously the OT. I know quite a lot of occupational therapists as well. It's so like Isaac was dyspraxic. So and a couple of my yeah. friends are yeah. um, OT 
trained and it's a really interesting job yeah I mean you know nowadays it's a degree and it's yeah. you know but I I my dad um who was in the military he was in the navy oh, he was a keen rugby supporter yeah. and um so therefore the rugby was always on the telly and I supported Wales so I applied to the University College Hospital in Cardiff because JPR Williams was a doctor there oh, it yeah. was disappointing I didn't oh. get to go there but <laughs> hey hey uh, things are meant to be, aren't they? I'm yeah. a strong believer that everything's meant to be. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, throughout my whole life, you know, I've been very fortunate. You know, even when I was previously made redundant, probably, well, I don't know, 16, 17 years ago, it ended up with an opportunity that was yeah. much better that's, for me. That's because you know? that's because what kind of person you are, Sarah. <laughs> it's, my life's pretty much been like, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I can't, I don't have any regrets. I've just, I've worked really hard and, and things mm. have happened um, right for me and it's yeah. it's nice and uh, having that positive attitude and stuff I yeah. think really does help in life yeah I think you have to otherwise yeah. you'd probably be fairly yeah sad I mean I'm not saying because some people think when you say uh, having a being positive people you know say you know that's not realism and I I don't mean it that way I mean things are difficult and situations are difficult yeah. but what we do is we turn them around and we make them positive and, make them and that's what's being positive yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, let's, let's let's move on then to um, your your family life um, so um, you're the daughter of a military man yeah mm -hmm. so you tell me about your father right my dad my lovely dad. I was a bit of a daddy's girl. I was. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he um, he was born in Worthing. He was the son of um, greengrocer, market oh, garden, yeah. and um, he decided to join the navy after he'd been to university, where he did oh gosh, maths and geology or something wow. that's completely beyond me. Yeah. I'm not a mathematician for no, love nor money. Nor me. <laughs> <laughs> and he did his. Uh, PGCE um, he trained as a teacher and then he joined oh, the wow. Navy so he was a teacher in the Navy Brilliant. Uh, teaching navigation that's fantastic um, so excellent and how long did he serve he served for 26 years gosh that's a yeah. long time long, long time yeah. and, and, and how did that affect your family well do you know that's a really interesting question because many many military families are moving around yeah. all the time yes um, and had these lives where they're two years in one place and then the children are changing schools because they're going somewhere else. Yeah. I don't know why it happened, but my parents made the decision that me and my mum would stay put. Oh. So we lived in Chichester and my dad was going off to London or off to sea or, you know, but wherever he went. it made you went. more stable. Yeah. And, yeah. and how did you fight? Did you miss your dad a lot then when he was away? Yeah, do you know, we found some letters after he died. Oh, um, I didn't know he died. I'm sorry about oh, that. No, it, yeah, I mean, that's the reason we ended up in Lincolnshire, actually, oh. because he was unwell. But I found some letters and we used to write letters because that was, you know, before modern technology. I still write yeah. letters now. Yeah. I love writing. Yeah. So... And that was just wonderful. You know, that's yeah. how we communicated. And he had so many stories to tell. He was... He was the sort of guy that he was a great raconteur and very oh. good at chatting people up. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think they call it baron strangling. Where you, you know, he would go ahead of the ship, for example, and meet the expats and whoever yeah. um, were there and set up visits to the ship and and the, you know like gatherings on the yeah. shore. And so he had, he had some, some emotional intelligence then. Yeah, yeah, he was sneaky. He yeah. was clever, <laughs> <laughs> and he had some. He just had some great times, you know, oh. meeting all sorts of fascinating and people. Um, oh, that's really so, cool. Yeah. So you've got really good, strong memories of, yeah. of that. And yeah, it sounds like you had a really healthy childhood, which is nice. I was really good lucky. Balance. I was really lucky. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. And, and, and any special memories of that um, period of that time? relating to the military or relating to how you felt as a child or um, I mean I I remember going to places like Greenwich to see the painted oh. hall when my dad was based at Greenwich, I love um, Greenwich. you know and, and going to my first cocktail party um, when I was old enough to and meeting an American naval officer and deciding that I was going to run away uh, <laughs> in the American <laughs> Navy. That never happened. Um, and, and 
a phenomenal opportunity as a result of my dad. I did go to a garden party at Buckingham Palace because oh, I was over 18 and unmarried. So, you know, we had some Those opportunities. Op- lovely opportunities. Fantastic. You know, that privileged Couldn't you to remember where your had. first cocktail party was? I do. It was HMS Nelson oh, in Portsmouth. Nice. And I remember this American guy was very, very tall and very, very handsome. Um, <laughs> and you find it. Oh. Love at first sight. Yeah. <laughs> Lust. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and we kept in, my, my parents are very hospitable, so yeah. he was invited over for dinner and, you know, we oh. looked after him as well while he was around. So that would have yeah. been even more difficult for you. had <laughs> his heart palpitations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, um, so, I, so I know now of what you did before you worked with um, Safa. Yeah. Um, what 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 led you down the path of working with Safa? Was it is it is it all of these links and it's absolutely nothing to do with them whatsoever, no? believe yeah. it or not. So my husband, um, who was ex army, um, came out of the army, retrained as an engineer, and then, for some unknown reason, then retrained in HR. Oh wow! Invo- evolved his career, and he he got into corporate governance and ethics. Yes. And when we made the decision to ditch stress and our life down south in 2017, he basically retrained as a data governance officer and ended up working on a one-year contract for SAFA. At the same time, I think he started in the May, and in June, I broke my ankle. Um, As a dog owner, you'll appreciate that there are often toys lying around. Yes. And um, I turned my ankle, or broke my ankle on, <laughs> yeah, on one of Max's toys. Um, and I was downstairs with my leg elevated and he was working for Safa upstairs and kept coming down and saying, did you know Safa did this? And I went, no. You know, Gosh, two hours well, later, did you know they did this? And so I ended up on the website, you know, and, and finding out all the sort of things that Safa... Genuine Saffer, interest. Yeah, Safa did. You know, and I just thought, wow... I didn't appreciate the breadth of yeah, services that they offered. Um, and then I clicked on vacancies and there was a job. Boom. So I ended up working with them in the brand new East Midlands hub, which is the single point of contact yep. for p- anybody that's oh, professionals as well as anybody who needed support. It's so like counselling and uh, the whole setup. Yeah, we, we would just take the calls and then we'd refer them to our branches if there was a need for casework because the volunteers yes. do the casework within SAFA or refer them on to Op Courage, for example, if they yeah. needed support with their yeah. mental well-being or any other um, you know, organisation relevant to their yeah, it's a really positive change. Yeah, absolutely. And we're talking about... Cause, uh, Excuse my ignorance if I'm coming across as, as ignorant. No, not at all. I, I thought SAFA was um, for veterans and supporting their families. But yep. but is SAFA also for people serving in the armed forces? Absolutely, yeah. yes. I, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't Can, know that yeah. bit. We have, um, part of the organisation is the serving communities teams right. who are volunteers yep. who are based on a lot of the military bases in the UK and indeed abroad and they will support the serving communities on those bases um however they can still come to the hub and we can still provide that support Brilliant. which is you know um i mean i'll give you an example yeah, and, and do, I, I just i think about this guy and and i'm so happy that he's his life has turned out to be so positive i i took a call when i was in the hub from a young man who wanted help finding his proof of military service yes um, I'm a bit of a natterer and he was also a bit of a natterer so he got into a chat um, and he was applying for housing because he was very severely disabled as a result of a degenerative uh, disease I can't remember w- what it was military he, related or no, no no it was just one of those things that may be a genetic thing but yeah. anyway he was only in his mid 40s so he was a young guy oh. um, he'd served and we got chatting and um he was talking about he, that he couldn't get out of the house oh, and I, um, I because he didn't have a motorised wheelchair. Oh. I said, well, we might be able to help you with that. And and it ended up with... I actually ended up doing the casework for this guy um, and we got him a motorised wheelchair. We got oh, him a... Dear, that's so sweet. Um, oh, what do you call it? A hoist for his car boot oh. and a shed so he could put it in there to charge. 
And that's an example that's of... That's just one tiny example, isn't it? Yeah, You're but making me cry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but he, it's an example of the fact that he didn't know that we no, could do that. He no. just wanted help with his military proof of service. And that extra mile with yeah. for him. And people don't know what we can do or what Safa can do. Um, no. You know, it's, it's quite far-reaching. And I was talking to, to Rene earlier about the adoption service, which isn't around anymore it's literally winding down we're still supporting the people going through the process yes. but not taking on any more new clients because it's been established 20 or 30 years it's it's long time established because if you were a military family wanting to adopt yeah. and you were say working in Lincolnshire because you were based at RAF Waddington but then you moved and you went to yeah. Dereham or Dereham in, in Norfolk yeah. you lose the progress you've made with your process and yeah, you have to start do, again yeah. so Safa set up an adoption service that followed the family the family through the military yeah. journey yeah whether they were in the UK or and in that's the still abroad, going that is actually winding down now mm. because actually because the adoption service has actually improved now absolutely yeah. and it's it's no longer needed yeah. because people can stay with the yes. same organisation through the whole yes, process yes yeah because regardless we, when me and Daniel adopted Isaac, they um, were just changing to the 10 month period and they oh. tested that on us. Oh, right. So we, we, we went through it in 10 months. Very, very, very intense, but it yeah. c- could take two to three years before that. It's so a long time, isn't it? There's a lot a of children in care. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool that they did yeah. that. Mm. Really good. Um, so I was just going to ask you as well. Um, What's the most important lesson you've learned about working with this charity and working with veterans and, uh, and people from the armed services, armed forces? I think that not enough people know about the scope of what SAFA can actually deliver, can actually do to support people. Um, we do an awful lot that people just don't know about, unless you, unless you go to their website. You know, there's a lot of support for military families with disabled children, for example. Yeah. Um, we do mentoring, which is supporting service leavers or those that have recently left to transition into civilian life. Yeah. If, was, if you're a 16 year old young man who's joined the service, you're in for 10 years, you've never had to pay rent, no. you've never had to pay bills because it all just is deducted from your salary. Yeah, yeah. Um, so some people really struggle with that transition. So our mentoring service, you know, is fantastic for that, and that's you know that's supported. Do by you know, I think that's I think we sh- if you're if you're open to it that it might be that we have another podca- pod- podcast that you can actually t- explain more about SAFA and what they actually do, so we can get that out. To the military, and the armed forces, and yeah. uh, and the veterans. Uh, I'd I'd love to do that, Dean. I think what I would, or, or some you could yeah. point it in the direction of somebody yeah. I'll, working. I'll, there. I'll, I'll more than happily speak to a colleague yeah. and find the right person. Yeah, because we can push that out, and we can really let people know yeah. what you do. And you know, we've worked what so well together. It's good to carry yeah. on working together. Yeah. And, and it's. I know I keep talking about Isaac, but he's just doing his GCSEs at the moment. And, oh, bless him. Um, as soon as he finishes, I've got a list of um, life lessons, like mortgages, PCP, HP, you know, everything. And we're going to spend a couple of hours a week with him, teaching him the life lessons that they don't teach teaching him at school, school, you know, credit and yeah. loans and overdrafts, all of that. Yeah. So we're just building that list now and getting the information oh, wow. for it. So I can understand somebody being in the service, yeah. you know, and being totally looked after, um, you know, how difficult that must be. And I know mm-hmm. sometimes their skills are really transferable and it goes really smoothly and sometimes they just can't adjust mm-hmm. and yeah. having a charity like SAFA there is just um, phenomenal, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, the mentoring service is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think um, you'll agree with me that, that we should do a shout out to uh, Safa because there's this good news that King Charles III is now a patron. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> it's taken such a long time, and it all and it happened just after I left, actually. Ah. So, and I found who did I find out from? My husband still works for Safa. Oh, does um, he? Yeah. So, um, what regiment was he in? Sorry, engineers. He, he was in the Royal, Royal Engineers. Uh, Remy, Royal Remy. Engineers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Royal, yeah. Uh, whatever they are, mechanical engineers yeah, as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. 
yeah. He was uh, 17 years. And your dad was Navy. Was he? He uh, was, yeah. was, he, was your husband Air Force? No, he was Army. Army oh, military. Yeah, cool. he was a helicopter cool. avionics cool. engineer. So going back to King Charles III, how did, you, how did you feel? I was delighted because it had taken so long and we were all, I think, I mean, certainly by the time I left at the end of April, kind of concerned that because it had taken so long, it was going to be a no. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was a yes. Oh, it's you really know. good news. Oh, it is. It's brilliant. Yeah. For, I mean, because has always had a military, pa- uh, a royal patron right from the word go. I think it was Princess Alexandra who was part of the um, establishing of Safa, yeah. um, who was, which was started by Sir James Gilday back in oh, 139 years ago. It's their 140th anniversary next year, 1885. Um, so actually that might be a nice thing to do actually, to tie it in with the 140th birthday, yeah. if you were happy to do something we, like that. We, yeah, we really would be, please. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, give us a yeah. contact to yeah. Rini and then I'll get involved as well. Um, that You just told me that story which made me feel really emotional and, and, and I know that's just a teeny, 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 tiny story and you, you've got hundreds to tell. Um, but uh, how does it make you feel when you help somebody out? How, how, how do you... Do it, it sounds... I mean, it was my job. Yeah, 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 get that. However, I think... When you can see, like, because when, when I worked in the hub, we were often referring people on, whether that be to a different part of Safa for, for ongoing yeah. support or, or other organisations. You don't often see the end result. You might know what the issue is at the beginning. Yeah. Um, but actually to have the opportunity to work with someone and get funds in place to see that make a tangible difference. Yeah. I mean, like the last time I spoke to this guy, um, his motorised wheelchair had afforded him the opportunity to leave the house on his own unaccompanied and take himself to to view that to look at the property that he'd been offered or he was applying for i should say you know so just so you did get to to, you did get you 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 being sarah then you you made sure you found out the old story the whole story and followed everything through (laughs) that's so important in life isn't it but it is but you know and and i just was so chuffed that I was able to support him and make a difference. And explain to, his to me life. how it made you feel. Can um, you can you do that? Can you, that emotionally? Obviously, you have a, a, again. You like your dad's some emotional intelligence, and yeah. some warmth. I mean, I I admire nurses, but I don't know if I could be a nurse. You know, no. so certain people can do certain yeah. jobs, can't they? Yeah. Uh, how did it make me feel? How does it make you feel? I mean, happy. Yeah. I was it's upsetting when you take a call like that from someone who's in such a dire situation and they're not asking for money they're not asking for anything other than can you get proof of service and then just through having a conversation giving them information and a bit of hope that actually we can do something to help and when you're able to then make that happen you know I'm not saying it was easy there were ups and downs along the way but we got there in the end um to make a difference is it, is good. Yeah, it is good. Good soul it food, is good. good for heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, and it makes you want to keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's That's reinforcing. Brilliant. Good mm. stuff. Um, what well, what's next? I mean, I know you're retiring, but <gasps> yes. Well, th- I was expecting to retire at the end of the year, so I thought I had a few months to plan and yeah. think through what I might do. It's all happened a little bit more quickly than I anticipated, but I was able to make the most of an opportunity, shall we say. So I have volunteered for the Alzheimer's Society because oh. dementia care was something that I was involved with. Oh, sorry, Dean. Just a quick break to let you know that Motivinity can save you thousands on a brand new car. The UK's Armed Forces, Armed Forces Veterans, NHS, Emergency Services, Prison Services, Education and Social Carers are all eligible for our discounts. To date, we have saved our customers an average of £7,000 on their brand new cars. Okay, so what's next for you then, Sarah? What's next for me? Um, I'm coming towards the end of an NVQ in Principles of Dementia Care, which I hope will support my uh, volunteering with the Alzheimer's Society. That's amazing. Um, when I was in my in my previous life down south, um, working in housing, I, I was um, involved with development of 
new housing, extra care housing for people, older people, but particularly with people t- with dementia. Yeah. So I have some, I've had the opportunities to learn quite a bit about Brilliant. buildings, but now I'm learning about people. That's fantastic. So. And after this podcast, I might grab you for a chat. So <laughs> my dad's been diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. Mm-hmm. Um, he's in his eighth, eighth year now. Um, he lives in Ashby, De La Zouch, and we is short to her memory is totally gone mm-hmm. but he he he's lo- he remembers all of his memories but then obviously he doesn't mm-hmm. um and it's 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 really it's really interesting being with him but we, we've been trying to communicate with social services and support and stuff for him and nobody wants to help him um so it's been a bit it's been a bit a little bit strange and because obviously we're going and looking after the house and washing and stuff and so when it, people go around to assess him he won't admit <laughs> it and they then they think he's okay yeah and um so yes yeah, so we haven't been able to get any support and they won't they said that we're, we're not allowed to move him from his house to to, to newark so we can look after him because they think that 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 will affect his Alzheimer's and dementia so much more, because mm-hmm. he know he knows where he lives. It's familiar. He knows mm-hmm. everything, and he and he and he can he can look after himself because he knows where everything is. And and moving him now at this stage, they think mm-hmm. that will, will will you know speed mm-hmm. up the dementia and Alzheimer's. Yes. So, yeah, it's. It's, it's, yeah. it's interesting but he yeah. does need support but mm. we just can't get it um, so you know I will have a chat with you afterwards yep, <laughs> I've tried everything <laughs> but yeah it'll be interesting to, uh, to, yeah. to hear about your MVQ and your training and stuff like that yeah. brilliant um, so do you, what do you do? You have any involvement? Are you going to have any involvement with that for future events, or try and keep your foot in the door there? I don't know. Is the honest answer to that? Um, I am actually supporting them in inverted commas with two things. One, they do a series of battle proms, or battle proms do four concerts every year. The nearest one to here is Burley House. Oh yeah, um, Burley House. And that's 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 a starts at like half past five, and it's like. I don't know displays and mm, music and no, singers and horses and a, you know a formal concert so I'm, I'm going to the one down in Hampshire actually at Highclere because my friend lives down there so I thought we'll go to Highclere it, you know Downton Tight. and all that um, and my husband is doing a an ultra marathon in Morocco for Safa yeah bonkers wow. um, in October, November. So, what we used to do when we used to fundraise, when he used to do cycle rides, um, organised ones, yeah. sponsored ones, I used to bake, yeah. and then people would give to Just Giving. So, we're kind of going to try and get into a bit of fundraising oh. doing that. So, can, can so we, yes, if we can help or get involved with, with that at any level, then please let oh, us know. We would love to. Thank you. I might yeah. send you the link to his Just Giving yep. page. Oh, yes, please. I'll definitely make a thank donation. You. And yeah. if, if you're baking cakes and stuff like that, I'm <laughs> sure we can make a donation and uh, stuff like that. Well, I can bring some to your next big brew up anyway. I would oh, more than happily do that. Oh, look forward so, to that. What's um, your favourite cake? Do you know, I'm a simple girl. I love... A Victoria's That's sponge. my favourite too. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria's sponge okay. was my favourite, but I do really like ginger cake as well. Oh, oh <laughs> I do a, I do a reasonably good squidgy oh, ginger cake. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, That's yes, exciting. Definitely, I'm going to maintain this relationship, and it's all going to involve, involve, evolve, or revolve around cake. I reckon. <laughs> yeah, uh, lush. Um, yeah. I couldn't think of anything better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've really got a sweet tooth. Well, it's been really, really interesting chatting with you, and I know that we could just go on and on and on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we look forward to still working with you in Thank some you. way. Thanks, Dean. Um, you're always welcome to the Motivinity HQ. Thank you. Um, and I, we wish you so much luck in your new venture yeah. regarding Alzheimer's and dementia. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to everybody at Motifinity. You know, I was saying to Rini earlier that I love looking at your LinkedIn page and your Facebook page because you celebrate your staff in a way that so few companies do. Yeah. And and that really appeals to me. Yeah, that's brilliant. You know, Our and staff and are so happy to come to work, you know. Yeah. I don't think anyone has that Sunday night 
haunting yeah. feeling of going into work. Well, that's we, we do regular surveys and stuff, and they everybody just loves working here. But but we're like like it's the same, isn't it? When you're doing a good thing, yeah, y- you know, you all you we, we all feel mm-hmm. good. You know, we're saving people thousands of pounds of cars. It's yeah. a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and they deserve they f- they bloody deserve yeah. it. They shift. They work shifts. They're on low salaries. They mm. need. They, they deserve that help. So, yeah. yeah, it's a feel good moment. So thank you good. for well, thank you for mentioning that, and I'll pass it on to the staff and definitely the marketing you. team. Thank you. Much appreciated. Okay, well you thank take you care. Look after yourself, and thank um, you. I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you very much, Dean. Much appreciated. Take care, Sarah. Take care. Before you go, our podcast aims to raise awareness of the organisations providing much needed services in the UK and highlighting the stories of extraordinary people doing extraordinary work in our communities. We have one small favour to ask you. If you enjoyed this podcast, hit the subscribe button. It's free and supports us in supporting you. This is why we do what we do. We aim to make a difference. Can you help by subscribing now?